Hey, it's Scott Orn at Cruise Consulting, and today we're talking about how to read an income statement. And it's super important for entrepreneurs to be able to read an income statement because you need to know how much revenue you're generating and you need to understand your cost. You're going to need to report this to the board. And by the way, you want to manage your company in a really smart way. This is like the barometer of your company. It's maybe one of the most important things besides just the number, which is the cash in the bank. Like that's probably number one, how to read income statement, number two. So you're going to start off with revenue. And maybe the simplest way to say this is just revenue is widgets times the price of the widget. So if you're selling a software license, you sell one license, you charge a hundred bucks, that means you generated a hundred dollars worth of revenue. That is the top line as a lot of people refer to it. Now, if you get a little more complicated, sometimes you're gonna subtract discounts or giveaways or things like that, the cost of those items from your revenue to get to net revenue. But for our purposes right now, just think of revenue as the number of services or the number of widgets you're selling times the average selling price. It's kind of that simple. The next line item in an income statement is your cost of goods sold. Now this is all the costs associated with delivering your service or selling your widget. So for online businesses like SaaS companies, it typically has things like your hosting costs and your customer support costs and all the little things that go into actually developing and, and delivering your product. For e-commerce providers, typically it's whatever you're buying your inventory for and sometimes like shipping charges and things like that or 3PL charges, but basically the cost of delivering your widget or your service. Now you're gonna subtract that from revenue and this gives you gross margin. So you often hear venture capitalists and founders talking about how it's better to run or invest in a high gross margin business because that means you have a lot more cash, a lot more margin to work with from your income statement. It allows you to invest more money in the next group of expense categories, which are called your operating expenses. So the first one is typically research and development. If you're a tech company, you're probably spending a good amount of money on research and development. This is a lot of the product development, you're building your SaaS offering. If you're an e-commerce company, maybe you're working on new formulations for your product, things like that. But this is where like the scientists, the engineers, that's where they're gonna be captured. And the, again, a high gross margin businesses can invest more in R&D. That's why venture capitalists like it. They can move a little faster there. The next category is sales and marketing. This is, you know, in this day and age, Facebook advertising, Google advertising, some of the swag you're buying. Maybe it's TV advertising if you're getting to be a bigger company, stuff like that. Anything that goes into sales and marketing, helping you push more of the product. The next category is general and administrative expenses, G&A. Now this is like the overhead. This is where your accountant goes and maybe your lawyer goes. Anything that's kind of like just typical business overhead will go in general and administrative expenses. So you take all three of those, R&D, sales and marketing, G&A, those are your operating expenses. You're gonna add them all together and you're gonna subtract your operating expenses from your gross margin or gross profit, some people call it. This will give you your operating profit. Now this is, all, it's almost like your net profit. This is almost what your take home is. This is a really good barometer for the company. Sometimes you'll hear the term EBITDA thrown around, which is basically just your operating profit and you're gonna add back depreciation and amortization. But this is the benchmark for most companies, especially more mature companies. Banks will look at this to make sure there's enough operating profit in the company before they wanna make a loan. The next line items are interest expenses or interest income. So if you have a lot of money in the bank and you're get, getting a good interest rate, you can generate interest income. A lot of companies that have debt, they're actually paying interest expenses here. And then other income, maybe other kind of weird things that, that pop in um, will be here. And you're gonna subtract them or add them if it's an interest uh, gain into the operating uh, income and you're gonna to get to net income. This is your net profit. This is kind, pretty much what you get to take home. We'll talk about the cash flow statement and adjustments to net income a little bit later, but this is the core barometer of your company. This is what bankers really like to look at because you might be producing a really good operating income, but have huge interest expenses, which eat up your whole operating income. So net profit, just think about it as like your take home. 
what the company is actually producing for all the work. And that's at the bottom of the income statement. So again, from all the way from the top to the bottom, you've got revenue, you subtract from revenue your cost of goods sold, that gets you to gross margin or gross profit. Then you're gonna subtract research and development, sales and marketing, general administrative, those are your operating expenses. You get down to operating income, and then you're gonna subtract interest expenses or other, inter other expenses, uh, and you'll get to net profit. And your net profit is gonna feed into both your balance sheet and your cash flow statement. We'll talk about that in other videos, but really it's kind of the bottom line. It's what the company is really producing. Now, I hope this little exploration of how to read an income statement has been helpful. And again, founders, entrepreneurs, it is so important that you learn how to do this. So we'll produce more content and help you learn how to read these in even more depth. Hope that helps. Thanks.